And this question is for the incumbents. Are you in favor of term limits for council members? Start with Debbie. That's a good question. Um, I would say yes. Um, I don't know what what I would consider a good term limit to be, but I do think term limits are a good thing because it does give some new, fresh uh, blood uh, opportunity to get in and, and get involved and, and help make some decisions. <clears throat> I've personally never thought of the issue. Um, I would like to put more thought into it, uh, but my knee-jerk reaction is if it's what the people want, I think that's what we need to do. If the people think that, you know, that we need some turnover on town council, uh, I think we should definitely do that. Uh, the only drawback I can see being in a small town, sometimes you're, you're limited on a number of very qualified people. So if you do get somebody that's really good, do you really want to push them on? You know, sometimes we've had really good presidents, and we'd like to have them for another term, and we've had to move on. But I can understand the concern. <laughs> But if the people wanted that, I think we should do it to people. Okay, this is for all of, for everyone. Uh, would you be willing to be a member of council without the monthly pay that council members receive and apply the money set aside for your salary to specific needs of the town? And let's start with Jeremy. Um, if the town needs it, I'll give it back. I mean... You know, like you always want to put the town first. I, I don't think they get paid much anyway, so um, I, I don't know what they get paid. But yeah, if the town needs it, yeah, you got to kind of put that money back because you you you're for you're for the people. And like I said, when you do well, I'll get that money back. So that's one of my strengths. So yeah, I'll give it back if I need to be. I actually, the first time that I thought about running for local government, I was running for the um, appointment on the Board of Supervisors that had opened up. And I didn't even know that they actually got a stipend <laughs> when I was running and somebody told me how much it was. I was like, oh, okay. Um, I, I don't think that the amount that is being paid to the town council is why anyone is running. I think that everyone up here is running because they want the town to be better. Um, and if there wasn't any pay, if, if we didn't make anything to be on council, I think everybody would still be running for the job, including myself. Um, I think covering expenses when somebody has to go to training or something would be nice, you know, just so that they're not covering it out of their own pocket. But, yeah, if, if they needed the money for something in the budget, I would definitely give it up. When I applied for uh, one of the positions... When I was appointed, I had no idea that there was a stipend even involved. Um, I was I was uh, applying for a job I thought was completely volunteer. So yes, I would absolutely do that without the money. I too, uh, when I was uh, asked to put my name in the hat to fulfill uh, Dr. Goings' term, uh, but I, too, did not know that they were compensated. I knew that the county board supervisors were, but I didn't know that the town, you know, officials were, town council was compensated. Uh, it's not a lot of money. It isn't. Um, it's, it's nice that people are compensated for work, but if the town needs the money, obviously, uh, it'd, be, it'd be neat to give it back. I've, I've coached wrestling and on the kind of a side note, but it's similar. I've coached wrestling since 2000 here at Allegheny High School, and there were many times that I've gotten a coach's stipend, which is a lot more than what you get as a town councilman, um, oddly enough. Um, I've put that back into the program and, and into kids, and uh, so I have no problem doing that. I, have a, I think I have a good track record of doing that, and I would definitely give it back to the community if there's ways to do that. Can we, can we find out how, how much is the stipend? I mean, just, just so we know. I don't either. So. <laughs> who, who has that answer? It's, it's $200. $200 for regular camp, $225 for a slice bag, $275. Is that a year or a month? A month. A month. Oh, man, we can get that back. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot more time than $200. <laughs> yeah. Okay, our next question. Uh, this is for everyone. Through the 
size of a council member, how would you rank the way our town looks from one, meaning needs intensive improvement, to five, meaning the town looks great just the way it is? What would you change first if you had a magic wand? And we'll start with Courtney. From one to five? Um, probably a three. I would, um, yeah, I would give it a three. I think the fact that um, the Hulu series came in here for Dope Sick and, you know, a lot of the shots of town were of the, you know, less nice portions of the town, you know, the parts that made it look like maybe we were on the decline still. Um, but I do think that we are making progress to make things look a lot nicer. I think the grant program that the businesses have been able to put money into the storefronts downtown, I think that's been really nice. I think a lot of the businesses, you know, moving around has been great because they've freshened up a lot of the business, the storefronts in town. Um, I think if there was any way to provide some sort of assistance for residents to be able to clean up their their yards and houses and stuff, you know, maybe. Maybe if there was some way that we could help out the residents to clean up some of the more residential areas, we might, you know, have a nicer look in certain areas. But I think I think the town's doing a really good job of trying to get things cleaned up. Um, maybe sometimes it just takes neighbors helping each other out because you know we have a neighbor; her grass kept being pretty tall. My husband just started cutting it for her. You know, we we can always help each other out. We can offer to do things to make things a little bit nicer. I think that the town is doing really well on picking things back up. I think the town looks beautiful, um, but I think we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. So I'd say from, from one to five, I'm a three plus maybe. Uh, if I had a magic wand, if I had a magic wand, I would fill every storefront and I would tear down every house that is condemned and I would basically remodel the houses that need to be remodeled. We do have a number of citizens in, in our area that are doing just that. Um, have taken on, you know, the task of, of buying old dilapidated houses, refurbishing them, and either renting them or selling them. And kudos to them because they are certainly helping our town. But that, that's what I would do. I, I would also put Clifton right as a three because uh, I think there's always room for improvement. But I don't think it's at the bottom of the barrel either. Um, or I wouldn't choose to live here. Why would you? Um, uh, the thing that I would definitely address is, and I think I spoke into this in one of the other uh, community gatherings or candidate forums, is the housing issue that we face. Um, since about 2000, the last 25 years, uh, we've our vacancy rate in Clifton Forge is as steadily inclined or increased uh, I think it's gotten up to as high as 24 percent of a vacancy rate and and the important thing to understand here is not only are they not living in we, we, we don't have everyone living in houses and full but I think it's over 50 percent of our houses were built prior to World War II so when you do buy a house you have to put a lot of money into it so if I had that magic wand, I would <laughs> fix the houses up and fill them with the families that Jeremy wants us to have here. I, I really would. Um, I give Clifton somewhere where like the rest of the candidates said a three. I mean, you look downtown, it may not look the best, but then you go up in the Heights, it looks beautiful there. Um, McCormick Street's beautiful, a lot of old houses, a lot of people do everything. If I had the uh, magic wand, what I would do is every person that has a home that lives in Roanoke, Virginia, and left their home vacancy, I would want to see a for sale sign on all of them. I would want some type of way I could force those people to sell because if you don't want to invest in our town, don't think that you're going to sit somewhere and bring all your money somewhere else and you're going to leave your property looking like this and want to embarrass everybody that loves living here and want to continue to live here and want to stop businesses here. I, I want to get all those people out. I want all of them to have for sale signs on their home if they're not here. And their businesses too. That's, okay. That's 
This question is for everyone. Our channel runs on volunteerism and a strong core of volunteers. List the activities that you currently participate in as a volunteer. Debbie? Well, I can honestly tell you that I, I can't think off the top of my head what I actually participated in as a volunteer. I mean, I honestly, I just can't think of anything off the top of my head. I, I participate in community events and, and things, but I, I, I don't. I can't say that I volunteered at the polls. Um, yeah. it, it's definitely tough when you put on the spot up here. There's no doubt about it. Uh, what, what you can come up with. Uh, you know, one of the things I do personally is I volunteer at a concession stand where we raise money for our, our youth wrestling club. Um, and I pretty much organize the whole thing and find volunteers and have people work for that. And we give all the money back into the kids. Um, with the upcoming event, though, I can think of one thing that I helped with. Uh, me and my wife helped with the corridor club appeal cleanup the last spring. And we went through the whole, we walked the trail and helped clean up. And a little plug here, there's one coming on Saturday. Unfortunately, I have my 25th year reunion at BMI, so I won't get to partake in it. But if anybody's available Saturday um, to help clean up our town, it's, it's a great event and it's a good volunteer event. But that's one thing I did that I can think of off the top of my head. I guess any organizations I don't volunteer for, but um, I do volunteer. I mean, you know, doing a fall festival, I mean, my house is right next to it. I volunteered three of my trash cans that I didn't know about. I volunteeredly picked up trash in my property that blew from the, you know, the hardware on in my property. I pick it up. I pick it up in the street, you know, like I just stay in an area where trash, I try to keep that beautiful. I don't, I don't go to the town and say, um, you know, Chuck, look, every, there's mess everywhere and things like that. I mean, I just, I just pick it up. I mean, you know, I try to keep the downtown looking, looking good. I mean, when I see trash, I, you know, I go in the parking lots and I pick it up. Um, other than that, yeah, I don't, I don't go try to bother the town about all the trash and just trash. I mean, I understand it's downtown. It's going to be trash. Just pick it up and put it in the trash can. I wish they had more trash cans that I could put stuff in, but. Um, that's that's how I volunteer, like not bugging the town about stuff that really doesn't matter that you can really just put, it's not that hard to put stuff in the trash can. So that's how I volunteer. Um, so when I first moved here, I was already working as an election worker for the county. Um, I got I got put into the armory, so I. I did maybe two elections there and then COVID started, so I didn't do any more elections. Um, I volunteer for the Parks and Trails Committee. Um, I went to meetings for a few months there. I was elected the chair of the Parks and Trails Committee. So I'm voluntarily the chair of the Parks and Trails Committee at this point. I'm also the project lead on the All Abilities Park and Sensory Trail projects. Um, I've been on the Juneteenth Committee the last two years. And um, I work with the Allegheny Core group so that, you know, we work with racial equality and now we're working on all rights and equality issues. Um, I've, I've just always thought that if I have the time, I should be putting it into <laughs> something that's worthwhile. So I, I like volunteering for things. Thank you. Okay, this question is for everyone. If you received a $1 million grant to use for the town in any way you want it, what would you use it for and why? Let's start with Dale. As individuals, $1 million sounds like a lot of money, and it would be. It would change my life. Uh, for government, $1 million doesn't do as much as you think it would. But I think I understand the premise of the question is, you know, if you had this big windfall, uh, we, we talk and harp about what things that we offer for young people. You know, when, when I was a child growing up in Clifton Forge, uh, we had a city pool. And that was a neat thing that kids, you know, I lived on Rose Street, Rose Avenue technically, we call it Rose Street. But, you know, you could walk to the city pool, and it was a great summer activity. 
I know we can't really, uh, can't really uh, think about hot stuff right now. You know, if you asked me this question in the summer, it would sound a little more appealing. But um, I think there would be something neat that we could put in that's doable, like a splash park. You know, for young people locally to use. You know, you could have you know special rates for the locals, but it would also be something that people maybe staying at Dalton State Park could come in our town and enjoy too for a different rate. But it's something that some other governments have done. They've done splash parks, and uh, and I think that would be something good for our young people. <laughs> they could enjoy that, especially during obviously during the hot months. And it's something that wouldn't be too much of a burden on the town uh, insurance purposes wise, because it's not the same as a pool. But me, that's just that's one thing off the top of my head. I would say it'd be something good for young people. Um, the things I'll do is, um, that with the grant money, I give it back to everyone. Um, like I said before, I want to separate Clifton Forge into neighborhoods, and I want committees and heads of those committees um, that represent those neighborhoods. So when Clifton Forge, let's say if I separate it into five neighborhoods, that million dollars uh, will go to the head of that committee of that neighborhood, and they would discuss what they want to do with that money. Uh, I don't think council should really get involved unless there's a big conflict and things like that. But the people that live on those streets or in those neighborhoods, they should decide what their neighborhood looks like, um, what type of businesses is in their neighborhood. They should have some sort of input and study the council. I kind of wanted to shrink it a little bit and say, okay, you guys tell me what you want on your street. Um, it's all about it's all about you. If you want if you want a basketball court, if you want a bigger park, okay, you find land you as a as a community, as a group committee, and you guys, you guys build a build a basketball court with 200,000, 200, or you want to pull like Dell said, okay, where are the pools? The council doesn't need to tell you where the pool. Maybe everybody wants one. Maybe it's too far. I know my kids like to go to Linden Park, but guess what? They can't ride their bike up that hill, or either down that hill to Washington Park. I <laughs> mean, so you maybe like you know, guess what? They want they want a park, so. They should just decide, you know, how the park should look, buy some property. So I'll give it back to everyone in this room, and you decide as a as a, a committee what you want to do with the money. Council council should just say, uh, kind of stay out of it unless it's going to be a conflict with another community. Thanks. So I'm torn because I know that we do have the All Abilities Park project already. We're working on fundraising and I know that they told us the sweet spot for a park like what we're talking about is about half a million and we are talking about a splash pad at that park if possible so hopefully we will be able to fund it and we will be able to have a splash pad at that park. Um, I'm torn because it's between I want this really great park and I think we need to work on the water and sewer lines but I would also really like to see a grant program for residents to be able to fix up their properties the way that the businesses downtown have been able to, where they had the matching grants, where if you put in some money, they'll give you the matching funds to do something nice for the property. So I'm a little bit torn because I want to do all of the things, but if I had to choose something right now, I would put a million dollars into that All Abilities Park because we would bring in tourism, we would have people coming from all around to visit for the splash pad, and. You know, there's not any place like that anywhere nearby. The closest place is Daleville, and there's a lot of people already attending that park. So we would be bringing in people from Bath County, Botetourt, you know, Stanton, Lexington. We would have a lot of folks coming our way. They'd have to spend money when they're in town. They'd have to buy food and gas, and there'd be a lot of stuff for them that they could do here. So I, I, I would have to put it into the park right now. And my answer is completely different from any of these, <laughs> because my brain goes infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> I, I know that everybody here has seen uh, our public works staff working on broken water lines, broken sewer lines, middle of the winter, all night long. We have uh, a pretty archaic uh, water and sewer system uh, throughout the entire town, the lines, the lines. And, um, and what you're seeing are reactive uh, measures that we have to take when something goes terribly wrong. So in my mind, I'm thinking if we could get proactive, replace more of those lines, including some power upgrades to some residences that possibly need it. There's still, 
I, I know um, some of the houses still have some pretty old electric systems that probably need to be upgraded and updated uh, just for safety reasons. Um, but for me, it would be an infrastructure thing to, to, uh, to make the sewer and water lines better. And the next question is for everyone. Do you believe the town should give up its charter and merge with Allegheny County? Let's start with Jeremy. No, no. I think, I think the opposite. I would like to see the town merge with maybe another town that's around here and, you know, we make a bigger council. That's what I would like to see or maybe take some, take some property from the county. I want to see the town get bigger. That's the way we get businesses here. We have to, we have to get our numbers up, our population up and things. Um, yeah, I don't think the, I don't think the county can really run this town and Yeah, I, I would like to see. I would like to see Club the Forge merge with another town, and that would be one of the things I would try to work on when, when I'm on town council. So I think personally, when I first moved here and I didn't understand much about how the council worked, I did have the view that you know we could probably just merge with the county and it would be easier. We'd have less taxes, and you know. When I didn't understand what it is that the council does and what the town gives us as benefits, um, I spoke to a couple of people at the county, a couple of people at the town, and they changed my mind. So I, I got the new information and I found out that there's a lot of things that we would lose. Like right now we have the rescue squad that we have in town, we have police, we have the library, we have snow removal that happens immediately because I'm right across from Public Works, so we're always cleared all the time, over and over throughout the night. Um, I I really appreciate all that the town does for us, and I think that if we would merge with the county, we would lose all of the voices that we currently hear. So right now we have you know a number of people for council that can vote for our benefit, but if we would merge with the county, we only have two seats. So anytime that there's a vote that's going to have anything to do with the town, all of a sudden, you know, there's only two voices compared to all of these folks who are from, you know, Potts Creek and Valley Ridge and Rich Patch. They don't understand town needs the way that we do. So I would not want to merge with the county. I would not want to merge with the county. Uh, we are part of the county, but we are our own community with our own needs and our own um, plans and our own goals. Um, I think that our town, again, has so much potential that we need to stay a town, a strong town, and continue moving forward to, to make it even better. Uh, the short answer is no. Um, I think that, I've, I've heard people say that before, you know, and that's a good thing. We just need to give up our town charter, you know, and go back into the county. I don't think what people understand is the unique nature of Clifton Forge. Yes, there's towns in the county, you know, right nearby we've got Selma, we have Iron Gate. But what we have downtown makes us different. And even if for some crazy reason we did revert or give up our town charter, that we'd still be paying higher taxes than those other residents because we have a special downtown district. You know, there's, there's not street lights out in Callahan from corner to corner, you know, there's different things that we have. And so, like I said, no, uh, I just think the current form that we have represents the town citizens the best. Now this question is for the non-incumbents. There seems to be a lot of talk about how the town's being run and the divided community. If elected, what changes, if any, would you make to the governance of the town? Let's start with Courtney. I'm not sure that I understand exactly what they're asking. So what changes would we make to how the town is being run currently? Is that? Yes. Okay. Um, honestly, I don't think I would make any changes, you know, unless there's something <coughs> that I come across while on council, if I would be elected. Um, there's nothing specifically that I can think of that's not 
being done correctly or you know how I would do it. I I don't have any specific I don't have any specific complaints about how the town is being run at this time. Um the things that the things that I would um, probably change about how the town is being run is I just I just don't like one of the things that I don't like. I don't like the code enforcer. I, yeah, I hope that person's not in here. But um, I, I personally wouldn't have, wouldn't have done it because I want we are all unique. You know, I don't want somebody telling you because uh, you forget to cut your grass or you may have some overgrowth or you may put some decor in your yard that other people think that's not nice and things like that. I mean, we. We shouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have that, I would have the neighborhoods. Like I said, I would, I would separate in the neighborhoods and the neighborhoods, the people that live around you will make that decision on how your area should look. Um, the way the town ran is, I think, I think that we throw um, Chuck under the bus a lot, the town manager. I think we, we tried to lean on him. See, I want to pick a direction for the town. I understand that Chuck runs the town. I want to pick a direction, and I'm going to have it where Chuck gets us there. You know, he's going to be a gap there. I say, we at A, we need to go to Z, and however he does B, um, C, D, whatever, however he does that, that's how he does it. He's going to run the services that we put. He's not going to, we're not going to ask him to go try to bring businesses in. I don't feel that's his job. I feel the council should be providing that leadership to him, and... However, he gets it done. You know, we don't step on his toes. He gets it done how he wants to get it done. The next question is for everyone. What is your belief on the meaning of separation of church and state when conducting a town council meeting? Let's start with Debbie. Um, <clears throat> well, it's it's a it's a pretty uh, common phrase, um, and separation of church and state just means that we don't discuss religion in town council meetings. Um, opening with a prayer that we do, um, you may choose to participate, participate in that or not, but that is not part of our meeting, it's just what we like to do to start our meetings. Uh, just, that's, that's how I feel. Now, to me, separation of church and state is that... <laughs> Obviously, the, I mean, it's in its name, it's separated. You don't have uh, undue influence on the people involved in the processes based upon any of their religious thoughts or background. Um, so you definitely don't want to do anything that makes someone feel uncomfortable or unwanted in the environment. I'm not too sure you could separate in this type of community, because when you look around, there's a church in every neighborhood. It's like, there's too many churches, I almost want to say. Um, I don't think you could. I mean, the majority of the people are, you know, are, you know, Christian, believe in God. What I would do is make sure you treat everybody fair. I mean, but to say, to sit here and say that I won't consider the church and some of the policies that I make, I don't think you could do it because the majority of the people are do belong to some sort of church, and you and the people who don't believe in God and things like that, you have to make sure you hear them and treat them fairly too. I mean, you can't treat them unfair. I mean, you have to think about things that's going to benefit them as well. So, yeah, I, I really don't think you could, and not in this community, but any other community, I probably would keep that separate. I think that religion and spirituality are individual choices, individual decisions, and that if anyone wants to consult religious text or wants to pray on their decisions as a council member, I think that should be absolutely fine. I also think that it should be absolutely <laughs> private, that when they come in and they make their vote, they vote based on you know however they feel, but I don't think that they should be pushing any religious agenda when they're talking in a council meeting. I think that it's off-putting to someone who doesn't believe maybe the necessarily the same things as them. Um, and I think that it helps to establish an unnecessary pattern to have the prayer at the beginning of the council sessions 
I think that um, it's, I don't think that it's unnecessary. I don't think that it's a bad thing, but I think that if someone were to come in and they want to discuss, discuss an issue that maybe is a little bit touchy, that having something like a prayer at the beginning might be a little bit off-putting to some people. And I don't think that we need to put any sort of undue stress on people who are already coming in to express their opinions. Um, I think that anyone who who wants to make a decision based on their own religious preferences, that's perfectly fine. But I don't think that we should be discussing religious thoughts and ideals in a council meeting.